Hello everybody and welcome to Randy's Natural World. This video's featured creature probably strikes more fear at Americans than any other spider in the United States. And I'm talking of course about the brown recluse. Many people are absolutely terrified of it. And why not? We've all heard the stories. It's a common belief that this spider has flesh-eating venom which, if it doesn't kill you, will leave you with a huge painful crater at the sight of a bite. Even a tarantula can't do that. <coughs> And in the heart of the brown recluse's range, they are everywhere, all around you. The reason people don't see them much is because these spiders prefer to stay out of sight, hence the name recluse. But there are some people who see them all the time, whether or not they are actually brown recluses. I knew someone once who killed every spider she saw, believing they were all fiddlebacks, as she called them, when many of them were probably harmless wolf, cellar, and spitting spiders. With all that being said, there's a lot of misinformation out there concerning brown recluse spiders, and hopefully I can clear some of it up here in this video. Let's start with the bite of the brown recluse. After all, isn't that what everyone's most afraid of? We've all heard the stories. It seems everyone knows someone who developed an necrotic wound in their flesh after being bitten, allegedly. You know your Aunt Jeannie got bit by one of them recluse spiders one time? Mm-hmm. Bit her right on her fat ass. <laughs> You're one to talk. <laughs> she left her shorts laying on the floor for a couple of days, and when she went to slip them spandex over her butt cheeks, she got a bite. Can't say for sure whether it's a spider bite or not, but there was a big old hole on her butt. I think she was probably born with that. <laughs> You know, when I was coming up, we called them violin spiders. We called them fiddlebacks. Well, that figures. Now, when these spiders do bite, it's almost always when they are trapped. For the most part, the spider's tiny fangs can't really penetrate human skin unless the spider is pressed against it, such as getting stuck between clothing and skin. But first, let me say, bites from brown recluse spiders are rare. Additionally, the vast majority of people who are bitten do not have a severe reaction. Richard Vetter, a retired professor of entomology at the University of California, Riverside, and a brown recluse expert, said about 90% of bites only cause inflammation or nothing at all, while 10% of bites can cause some degree of necrosis. He said about 1% may cause systemic necrosis, which is more severe. Deaths from brown recluse spiders are extremely rare. Now, for those who do have a reaction to the bite, they can develop the necrotic wound that may not heal properly unless it is medically treated. Sadly, many people develop sores that are not related to a brown recluse bite, yet are misdiagnosed as such. Dr. Andrina Shufran, the director of insect adventure at Oklahoma State University, said that a misdiagnosis can be dangerous because medical professionals could be missing something more important. She said, quote, skin lesions can be caused by leishmaniasis, lymphoma, infections, all these things which can be much more serious than a brown recluse bite. And if you ignore those, they can lead to serious medical issues." Unquote. Indeed, Vetter said that many conditions are misdiagnosed as recluse bites when their cause is something else, such as infection, bad reaction to medication, diabetic ulcers, Lyme disease, or other underlying medical conditions. Many times, people do not know right away that they have received a bite, as the initial bite is often painless. Oftentimes, the victim is unaware until about three to eight hours later when the bite site may become red, swollen, and tender. Dr. Shufran said if a wound develops pus, it is not a brown recluse bite. She said, quote, if a sore develops pus and oozes, that's an indication of an infection, not a brown recluse bite. A study published in the New England Journal of Medicine reported that, as compared with patients with other bacterial infections of the skin, patients with MRSA were more likely to report a spider bite as the reason for their skin lesion. Perhaps because of the propensity for MRSA strains circulating in the community to cause painful lesions in the absence of previous skin trauma. Thus, clinicians should consider the possibility of MRSA infections in patients who report spider bites. If you suspect a bite, keep the area clean and seek medical attention. I'll get into the identification of these spiders in a minute, but first let me talk about their behavior. Brown recluse spiders are not aggressive, and they are indeed reclusive. They prefer to remain hidden in corners and behind and below things. They are quick to flee upon seeing a human, as they do not wish to tangle with us. And why would they? We are probably 10,000 times bigger than they are. Some of us may be 15,000 times larger, but I digress. With houses, they usually prefer to inhabit garages, basements, and attics. They will enter homes sometimes, however, usually when the summer heat begins. 
Brown recluses can grow to a little more than half an inch in length, not including the legs. The number one identifying feature of this spider is the violin-shaped marking, which is located on the cephalothorax. But that marking is sometimes faint, so there are other ways to identify this spider. Also, although there are multiple species in the genus Loxocellus, for this video I am featuring Loxocellus reclusa, the most common species, the brown recluse. Whereas most spiders have eight eyes, the brown recluse only has six eyes, three sets of two, arranged in a triad, like in this photo. If you look closely, they kind of resemble a dog. Just look at it, the two eyes in the front look like a dog's nose. Honestly, noticing the violin shape is easier than seeing the eyes, which requires close inspection. However, younger brown recluses may not have the telltale marking at all, or it may be very light in color on some adult spiders. So if you're nervous about it at all, it is best to just become familiar with them. I've been observing these spiders for years, and I can identify one even from a distance. And they move and run in a certain way that you'll be able to recognize if you familiarize yourself with them. This is an adult female, and this is an adult male. Note that the male has a larger leg span than the female. At first, it may be tough to distinguish between the two if they aren't side by side, but again, if you familiarize yourself with them, you'll be able to tell the difference between the male and female. Once you know what they look like, brown recluses are pretty unmistakable. The fairly thin legs are brown and become lighter near the cephalothorax. They have tiny short hairs all over, but close inspection is required to see the hairs. The brown recluse is sometimes confused with the cellar spider, as the latter has a splotchy marking on its cephalothorax which can slightly resemble the violin shape of the brown recluse. But look at this side by side. The brown recluse is quite distinctive, if you ask me. Also, cellar spiders have very thin legs, much thinner and longer than those of the brown recluse. Brown recluses may also be confused with spitting spiders, but if you look at this side by side, you'll see that the brown recluse and the spitting spider really don't resemble each other that much at all besides the fact that they're both spiders. The spitting spider doesn't have the violin shape on the cephalothorax, and its legs are much thinner. Prime recluse spiders can be found over most of Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas, east of Kentucky and Georgia, but just know they can probably be found a little ways outside of this range. Additionally, this map lists six Loxocellus species found in North America, north of Mexico. The brown recluse, Loxocellus reclusa, is all in red. Believe it or not, the vast majority of brown recluse spiders live outdoors where they inhabit dead wood, such as logs, but also under leaf litter, under rocks, and also in brush piles. As for structures, they can be found in barns and homes, which includes attics, garages, and basements, as mentioned previously. Brown recluse spiders are nocturnal and typically hide in secluded places during the day. They do not spin intricate webs. Brown recluses create irregular webs which serve as retreats and snares, but will sometimes leave the retreat to hunt. Females prefer to stay close to their home base, but males will wander farther when hunting. They eat insects such as pill bugs, mosquitoes, flies, cockroaches, and crickets, and even other spiders that they capture by hunting. They will also feed on recently deceased insects and spiders. I was searching for brown recluses in an abandoned storage shed when I happened upon this scene. This brown recluse had tagged herself some prey and couldn't wait to get this still living cockroach back to a secluded place to dine in peace. However, in her haste, she backed into the web of a steatota species known as false widow spiders. Unfortunately, I had stopped filming just before it occurred so I could reposition myself in that hot, cramped, creepy place, but the recluse was in an absolute panic to break free of the web while the false widow descended upon it. The false widow showed no fear of the recluse and attempted to capture it. The recluse managed to break free just in the nick of time, but was forced to leave its prey dangling in the false widow's web. The steatota species wasted no time in wrapping up the roach, and all the recluse could do was watch. It would sometimes venture close, as if she was trying to figure out how she could get her food back, but she always retreated. According to a thorough study of brown recluse spiders in Arkansas, scientists discovered most mating and reproduction usually occurs in June and July. 
Females were frequently found with more than one egg sac, and eggs per female ranged from 31 to 300. Spiderlings appeared to stay with their mother for three or four instars before dispersing. They feed on prey provided by the mother during this time. The maximum age for a brown recluse from emergence to death was 894 days for a female and 796 for a male. I like these spiders, so I don't know much about killing them with insecticides. When I find them in my home, I catch them in containers and release them elsewhere. Like at my ex-wife's house. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I told you I like these spiders. Although nothing is foolproof, there are things that you can do to make your home unappealing to brown recluse spiders. Number one, keep a clean house. And I don't mean just free of garbage and clutter, but free of dust as well. Especially dust in corners and behind and under things such as furniture. Dusty places attract spiders. Number two, there is a common belief that brown recluse spiders are attracted to wood as it reminds them of their natural habitat. And besides wooden furniture such as dressers and nightstands, that includes cardboard. It's probably a good idea to use plastic totes for storage rather than cardboard boxes, especially inside homes. Number three, Dr. Shufran said the most common way people get bitten is by leaving clothes lying on the floor overnight. Then, when they put the clothes on in the morning, they get a bite. Because brown recluse spiders like to hunt in the dark, they sometimes wander into clothing or shoes at night. Number four, to help prevent brown recluses from getting into bed with you, don't have bed skirts that touch the floor. Don't have bed sheets and covers that touch the floor. And don't let bed or bedding have contact with a wall or curtains. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it informative. Please like and also subscribe if you haven't already. Also, if you clicked on the thumbnail that showed me holding a large brown recluse, well, that was Big Sally, the star of the show. Footage of her was definitely used more than any other individual spider in this video. And no, Big Sally didn't bite me. She was, however, in a hurry to get back to her hiding spot as she does not like to be out in the open. And share this video if you want to help others be informed about this fascinating spider species. Until next time. The camera won't focus if you won't stop moving. Please stop moving. No, don't move.